This episode is sponsored by Angular Dev Summit, coming September 11th through the 18th, 2017. Hi, it's Chuck from devchat.tv. I reached out to some of my friends in the Angular community to put on a completely free, no travel conference for Ruby developers. We have speakers like Rob Wormald, Jeff Welpley, and others coming to speak about all kinds of topics in Angular. So if you're trying to learn Angular or you're trying to level up Angular, come check it out. The talks are happening throughout the day each day and we'll have a chat available during each session. Attending the talks is free, but you need to register. Go to angulardevsummit.com. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the next MyJS story. This week, we're talking to Chris Coyer from Shop Talk Show and Code Pen. Chris, how are you doing? Good, fantastic. We're also speaking with Charles Maxwood, web podcasting legend. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far. Uh, <laughs> super busy podcast dude. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, um, well, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on. I I can't wait. This is really cool. We ran some some good shows over there, and it's an honor for me to be on. Oh, thanks. Now we had you, and we we kind of did a crossover episode where we we talked about shop talk show and stuff with. Yes, that's right. Yep. So we, you know, we're still going strong over there on Shop Talk Show too. It's just me and Dave Rupert, and we yeah. we talk about web design and dev stuff, and we're still still going strong. It's still a very fun thing to do. Not absolutely no shortage of stuff to talk about on the web. Oh, no kidding, no kidding. Yeah, that was episode one sixty five. Man, that was a long time ago. We should have you guys <laughs> back on anytime. In fact, this is the my first. I I I I should almost apologize in advance. I was like, you know what? I've done enough shows in my life now that it's probably time for me to grow up with my audio recording equipment a little bit. So I've had for, I, it was eight or nine years I've had a Rode podcaster and I've never changed it. And it's a great microphone. It's There's great nothing mic. wrong with it. Yeah, I like it. And, but I was like, it's getting old. Then I thought, you know, as, as long as I've been doing this, plus I do code pen radio now too. And I get occasionally get to be a guest like I am this mm -hmm. second on your show. I was like, I'm going to upgrade a little bit. I can't go nuts, but I want to, I want to have some nicer equipment. So I bought a nicer mic and I bought, you know, but it's like a, it's a microphone that requires like an XLR input. So I have to have Ooh. a preamp for it. And then I ended up getting a little box that I don't even know how to talk about it that goes in before the the preamp kind of a processor kind of mm -hmm. thing so I'm like and this is the first show I've done with all this audio equipment so I'm very sure I have it <laughs> configured incorrectly but hopefully it sounds okay I'll yeah. get it perfect at one point well we all feel special <laughs> <laughs> awesome so yeah we're, we're going to get a little bit of your story which is uh, the whole point of this uh, my js story podcast and it, it's kind of interesting. Most of the people I talk to, they do some kind of open source thing. And that's why we had them on the show. And so we generally just talk about that. It's like, oh, okay, well, what was it like to build your thing? But you've done CodePen, you've done Shop Talk Show, you know, there, there are some other things out there that are used in different ways than just a JavaScript library. And so I'm, I'm really curious to see how you kind of became Chris Coyer, uh, <laughs> you know, CSS right. It's not tricks. really through open source, really, unless you consider writing open source. But yeah, I, I have not uh, I haven't struck any fame and fortune on on open source. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not I don't think I'm really looking to really. Yeah. <laughs> sure. So should I just should we just launch into some. Yeah, let's some history. Let, yeah, let's dive right in. How, how did you get started programming? Yeah, this is a, it's maybe a typical but but fun story, and it's fun to me for me to reminisce about because it's a, it just was a good time in my life. I, I smile thinking about my the early days in a way. And I just had a I grew up in outside of Madison, Wisconsin, and I'm actually mm -hmm. as I sit now in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, not too far away. Although I bounced around the world a little bit. Anyway, it was a small town outside of Madison, but it was just a really nice little school district. And and looking back on it now, I think of it as like a pretty privileged upbringing. You know, we had a really nice school district with like well-funded, well-designed schools. You know, like we had an art program that was just fantastic. There was ceramics art program there it was better than most colleges have. We had, you know, a computer lab full of pretty modern equipment. In fact, as an elective in this is high school, mm -hmm. we had programming. And I, I don't know how common oh, wow. that is these days, but a little bit. But it was straight up an elective for programming. And it was Turbo Pascal uh -huh. based, you know, and we had a nice laboratory. And it was, I was honest, the lab was separate from 
general use labs. These computers were like set up for network together even and for programming and stuff. And this is like mid 90s. So anyway, I took the class and I, you know, even before then, I kind of fancied myself a little bit of a computer nerd. You know, I, my parents had kept me in decent computers and, you know, that was part of the being privileged thing, I suppose, too. Anyway, I take this class and I love it. The professor is wonderful. He's, he's, you know, has very like gentle, good introduction to programming and taught us what he needed to know, but also was fostered our creativity and was very welcoming to me to, to really deep dive. And, you know, when I was getting going on a project, he was happy to come in early and let me into the computer lab in the mornings and get going on my stuff. And I was way into it. And that's why I smile about it. Cause I'm like, uh -huh. that, those were fun days programming just for the fun of programming and stuff. And, and it was so influential to me that I stuck with it in high school. And then I kind of felt like life was set in a way because I was like, when I go to college, obviously I'm going to do this. This is the most fun thing I did in high school. So I'm just going to do this and trucked forward with it. Nice. Yeah. I had a similar experience. I didn't do programming in high school. I think they had like network management classes and stuff in high school, but I did electronics. And so I was mm -hmm. building funky little circuits and we you know, we built robots that would follow a line and stuff like that. We did a little bit of programming, but it was like on an 8088 and it was, it was, oh, right, we, we right, would right. pin in the, the instructions and <laughs> make uh, LEDs light up and stuff like that. But yeah, you'd think that now, 20 years later, for me anyway, I don't know how I do. I bet we're about close to yeah, the same age. I'm 37. Close. That you'd think that, in in some degree, I'm sure some high schoolers are better. You know, they uh -huh. teach web stuff or whatever, but not like all together. It's almost a little sad to me. You know, I have some teachers who are, you know, friends who are teachers, and I was like, man, this environment does not sound like 20 years Im improved from when I was there. You know, like I kind of hoped that it would. Uh, whatever, the state of education, different show, I suppose. Yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. And yeah, I'm 37 as well, so I figure we're pretty close. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it's just kind of fun. So how do you go from that to professional web developer guy? Well, first you give up on it <laughs> and then come back <laughs> later. That's the idea. Because in, in college, I, I, I went for it for a number of years and almost got my degree in what we called at our university management computer systems, which should have been a red flag because it was... <laughs> not that fun. You know, it was more management focused than computer than programming focused. And even the programming stuff was very archaic. In fact, literally assembly for some of uh -huh. it. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Java, which I wasn't that into, but maybe I, maybe it was just me at the time, whatever, but I, I didn't connect with it as much as I did in high school, mm -hmm. ended up giving up on it, getting, getting a BA instead. So I was like, maybe I'll try graphic design and then was able to get back into ceramics, which was kind of a passion of mine at the time. And, you know, just ended up getting my degree in that. So I was like, oh, uh, well, crap, now I have a degree and it's not really in programming. So I can't jump right into a programming job. Those are hard enough to get at the time that uh -huh. couldn't get it. So I wanted to print, you know, my parents were in print. So <laughs> yet more privilege, I guess. But they were in pr and they were in print and, and they kind of hooked me up with uh, with jobs in that industry right away. So, you know, not not entirely hooked me up, but I did have kind of an internship thing that my mom hooked me up with. And then I bounced from that to some other print shops where I did digital prepress, which was like, it's like com technical computer work dealing with design documents. So we'd get in Quark Express documents or Adobe InDesign documents later on right. or whatever and prepare them for press, which is it's technical work that is a little unexpected. Like I find that most people in the world don't quite understand, you know, they, they design their wedding invite and send it off or they design a brochure and send it off to a printing company and it gets printed, but not realizing how much work had to happen to that document before it hit the press, because probably you did a terrible job of setting it up. <laughs> for press. Uh, anyway, so I did that kind of technical work for a while and, and, and found it fun in a way and that mostly I find it found it fun because I was young and I was like any job where you you know give me a nice computer and I can sit there and do technical things on it it was fun but it was not there was no creativity involved really and it just I don't know I just it just didn't seem as fun to me as like what seemed like being a real designer would be or being a real programmer, <laughs> yeah. working at an agency or something like that so I was gunning for a job like that when one came along 
because there's just an agency. I was still in Madison, Wisconsin at the time. A job comes along that they needed web help for. Uh, because at the time it was, and I think the world is still going through this to some degree. There's agencies out there that made their bones or whatever on print design. They had a ton of print clients. Print is their thing. They, you know, they do client work, but mostly the output is for print. And then in the same clients they have are needing less and less print work and needing more and more digital work. And so they, they wanted to, you know, as any smart business would do, they want to say yes to that work when they get it. Yep. And so they started saying yes to it, had one web guy, you know, before me, that guy just up and leaves because that's what you can do at a job, you know, (laughs) when you have one. (laughs) Yeah. So they're like, we need somebody now, and I happen to be available. So it was a very short interview process, and I was in, which is great. It was not a high-paying job. It was very intro level, but it was fun in that I was the web guy. I got to do all that. If a web job came in, it was all me all the time, which was some trial-by-fire stuff, but also was very fun. So that was my kind of intro to, to, I don't know, real programming, I guess. But, you know... At that time, JavaScript, totally not on my radar. You know, you're able to be a productive, to this uh-huh. day, I think you can be a productive web maker and not really know JavaScript. You can just piece together CMSs, add in mm-hmm. plugins and stuff for what you need. You know, there's, I, I would say, maybe even most web developers out there are that type, in a sense, that they, they piece together what they need, but yep. they don't deep know any languages you know and maybe i'm halfway in between that now you know that's where i started for sure and (laughs) you know just through being involved with it know more and more about the languages themselves now Uh but i don't forget who who that guy was that just (laughs) pieced stuff together yeah well and it's it's interesting because yeah when i got into web development so i was a computer engineering major in college did a bunch Mm -hmm. of it stuff and then when I got into web development, yeah, it was the same thing. It was like, okay, what's the jQuery plugin to make this thing go? And yeah, you would just cobble together your front end and then, you know, build out whatever APIs you needed on the back end to make it work. And that, sure. that was web development, right? So my deep expertise was all on the back end. And, you know, and then it was just, okay, well, I'm going to hammer this stuff together. And hey, look, it doesn't fall apart. So it's a front end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even today, I mean, I see a lot of people doing stuff with React or Angular or whatever, and it gives them a cohesive paradigm to work in, but still it's the same kind of thing in a lot of ways. Oh, I need a date picker. I'm going to go pull in the date picker plugin. You know, they they don't uh-huh. necessarily know how to build it. They just pull it in and make it happen because that that's all they need N- to do. Because it's, it's sitting there on NPM begging yep. you to use it. Yep. That's, which is, you know... I don't, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I, I, you could probably endlessly debate whether that's good or bad. And, and yeah. it seems like it's, it's, how do you not end on mostly good? It allows people yep. to be, allows people to get done what they need to get done. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you, you kind of got into the front end a little bit. I mean, how do you get from that to building something like CodePen and starting a front end, uh, podcast? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was through, even back then, I was like, this is so much fun. This is yep. the best. So not only do I want to make my career on, or not only do I think of and have made my career this, but like, it's kind of my hobby too, you know, for better or worse. But but I love this stuff. So it was at that time when I was, you know, piecing stuff together for the first time and building websites for real for the first time that I started CSS tricks with, you know, so it's about 10 years ago. This July, it'll be 10 years ago. Oh, wow. So, yeah. And it it wasn't any good then, you know, I mean, not that it (laughs) is now necessarily, but it was just me like blogging dumb stuff about web as I was learning it. So, and that just became really fun. And even at the time, it was like, maybe I can make some side income doing this as well. So that was fun. You know, like, can I crack advertising on here? Can it, can it buy me a case of beer every month? That would be cool. And then it just grew up over time. I mean, anything that you stick with, as I did for, as anybody would do for 10 years, you know, it's mm-hmm. going to, it'll grow slowly as long as you don't screw it up. <laughs> Whatever yeah. that looks like. Anyway, so that, and then because it's my career, because it's 
something I I consider my hobby and playing with. I just got better over time. Uh-huh. You know, I built lots of stuff. I would help friends with anyway. Yeah, you know, all of my time was was on it. Was on, was dealing with websites in some degree or another, and then writing about it as well. And then eventually, I get invited to speak at a conference, and I go to that, and that launches a new thing of greatness. But you know, or just a good things happening in my life because of that. You know. Yep. But so, but at the time, you know, I didn't, I couldn't quit my job. You know, I was just doing CSS tricks on the side. You know, eventually I get into podcasting. I think that was, I was maybe even four or five years ago at this point. These things are starting to feel a little old. Yeah. But I, I work though too. Uh-huh. You know, after the agency, I went to Wufu and that was a startup for making web forms. So I was there for a couple of years and learning how actual websites are built by real web programmers, you know, actually using version control and, you know, designing and building things from scratch that they're responsible for. So I had a, I I did a lot of learning there too, you know, it was agencies where I started, but I never went back to agencies after that small thing. From then on out, it was, it was building products. Uh, So I went to Wufu for a while. Wufu sold to SurveyMonkey. So it was at SurveyMonkey for a while and which was an even bigger scale which was interesting to learn how they operate and plan projects and execute things. And that's obviously a huge, very, very successful web app that's yep. still just killing it today. And then at the time, I was like, okay, I've been doing okay. I've been doing product work for a while. I made some great friends. Everybody did okay in this Wufu sale. Like CSS Tricks is doing well. I've left SurveyMonkey now on the idea that maybe if I work hard enough and I do just a good enough of a job at CSS Tricks, that it can be like my whole deal. It can be my salary as a human being. Mm-hmm. That was a that was a gamble. Pulled it off. But then as soon as I did that, I'm like, oh crap! I better do something else. <laughs> I better, I better, you know, not something else, but like really kick it up a notch. Not just uh-huh. be like I'm a you know, whatever. So anyway, I have some friends that I worked with at both Wufu and SurveyMonkey, still my good friends today, and now co-founders at CodePen. But at the time, we were just like, let's build something together. We know we like each other. We know we are have complementary skill sets. Yeah. We know, you know, all that stuff. So that was just a good story. And we didn't, it wasn't even particularly risky because we, we had fallback stuff. Mm-hmm. Even anybody in tech, you know, if you're good, you can go. Even if you fail, you just go somewhere else, you know? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I've told people. It's yeah, yeah. funny because people are like, well, because I was freelance for a long time. Isn't that sure. so risky? And, and it's like, no, my worst case scenario is I go get a job somewhere. Yeah, I like a great job probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I know people and I could yeah. just, oh, hey, are you hiring? Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, can you beat 110 or, yeah. <laughs> or whatever? Yeah. Know? Anyway, so... I don't know. Then we built CodePen and just now it's been another five years of CodePen and just slowly growing that up and knowing the whole while of what we learned the whole way, you know, like Mm -hmm. we should probably have monthly plans or something. We should probably try to make it a compelling upgrade for people. Community is important. So let's make it a kind of a community oriented product and uh, let's leverage what I've built on CSS tricks to, to, to help with that. And let's, let's just make it cool. And so now we've been just trucking away at that. So, just it was just a it's a it ends up being a fairly cohesive story <laughs> that's really really cool yeah. and it's interesting too cuz yeah i mean i see that there are a few websites out there that uh you know do what codepen does but you know it's it's something that really helps i think our community as a whole as far as hey you know this is a this is an example of code and you know this is um you know, people giving feedback on code and all of that stuff and just all of the really cool things that you can do with with something like CodePen. And so it, yeah, it's... Yeah, yeah. It was definitely not the first one on the block. Like you said, there yeah. was there's other things. Um, JS Fiddle and JS Bin totally predate it and have yep. still a lot of mind share in people's like, I want to throw some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript on the page and see the result for it. That was also the impetus for building it was that mm-hmm. those are, they're so cool. Like clearly... Yeah. For especially for showing small demos, which was the bread and butter of CSS tricks, by the way, you know, which was yep. let me show you a little bit of code. And uh, so it just was. But it was nervousness, too, of like, I don't I don't know. I don't know anybody at these apps, really. Like, I don't know what their business plan is. I don't want to move all of my demos over to something that I 
I just don't know what it's going to exist tomorrow or if it's going to make us some change I don't like or whatever. I probably was wrong about that and that they're still around today and doing fine. So maybe I would have been okay. But, you know, the idea is let's let me build my own here that I know that I have control over and that we're we do have a business plan and are in it for the long haul and all that all that stuff. And it's, you know, these days we've. We have a full-time staff. We're a profitable company. We're yep. chugging along with the feature set. And just these other apps have things that people like about them. I get it. But they're very different in that mm-hmm. in that CodePen is this community of people. You go to the homepage of CodePen and it's like, look at all the amazing things that, that people have done here. Search for whatever you need. You know, there's just a lot. It's more of a place to look around uh, the editor is still the the heart and soul of it, but but being able being able to explore it and and be a part of something is is what's going on at CodePen. That's different than JS Fiddle. JS Fiddle, perfectly fine, great. Mm-hmm. You put the code there, you see the result, but it's not really a community, you know. Yep. Anyway, so <laughs> was CodePen before or after Shop Talk Show? Uh, after. But just shortly, oh, that's uh-huh. funny. I can't, I don't know exactly. Maybe maybe pretty close to the same time as kicking off. I, I don't know the exact date. They feel like they are both about five years old. Okay. So pretty similar in times. And in, in Shop Talk Show has an origin story too. It's just like, hey, I met Dave at a South by Southwest in Austin one time. We were just, <laughs> nice. we were just walking around, screwing around. And at the time, I was like, podcasting is so fun. As you know, I'm sure uh-huh. you do this because you it. like it to some degree. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I suspect neither of us are getting rich off podcasting either. Here, You better like no. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not so uh, much. No, but it's, it's fun. It's worth en- enough, you know, uh-huh. whatever. Anyway, so I was secretly like I was a guest on a couple of podcasts like I am right now. I was like, this is so much fun. It's the best. And I want to be on a podcast, but I also don't want to do all the work because I, I've been, done enough projects and websites in my life to know that it's going to be work. But even if I don't know every nook and cranny of what it's going to take to pull off a podcast, like I'm aware that I don't want to do it by myself. Mm-hmm. I'd rather at least split the load with somebody else. And Dave came a knocking to me like, hey, I'm kind of interested in doing a podcast. I was like, done, let's do it. Let's split the work <laughs> down the middle, you yeah. know? So and that's what we do to this day. You know, Dave does a lot of... Um, I don't know, like we have a show going out today. He publishes it, you know, he uh-huh. figures, you know, gets the MP3 together and uses, does the CMS and all that stuff. And I book a lot of the guests and plan stuff. And so we had a redesign recently that I mostly did. And but and then he'll do other things. And it's pretty it's pretty equitable. 50 50 deal. Nice. Very cool. So what are you working on these days? Well, it's, you know, it, it was it was just it was. It was around that five years ago that 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 I was like, yeah, I want to be careful with what I work on. I don't like don't want to have 15 things I'm actively working on. I think it's more my style and spirit to just uh-huh. focus on my big main projects. So generally, I think about the main thing I do is code pen, you know, which is important because we took funding at one point, a small amount and hired some human beings. And we have a staff of seven now and are running a little profitable. Company. There's more. You know, when you have full-time employees, that better be your top priority, you know? Yeah. So I keep that my top priority. Uh, and then CSS Tricks is just big enough. And there's there's part-time staff that work on it. So, uh-huh. And it's I need to keep that going because that's a significant part of my career. So that's my second priority. And then and then podcasting is with Dave is 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 third, really. But they all get they all get enough time to be as things. I just keep trucking along on that stuff. I want to make sure I'm publishing good articles that are worth reading on CSS tricks. And I want to make sure, you know, it's, it's tr- at CodePen, it's particularly tricky because you have to, we want to keep up with what developers want is a, <laughs> is uh-huh. tricky. You yeah, know? that's really hard. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's a lot of just building stuff. You know, like we have a, a big new feature at, uh, at CodePen that's t- makes it a lot different than something like JS Fiddle or whatever, and then it's it. We have a it's called Code Pen Projects, in which that you can you have more of like a full file system uh-huh. that you're working with. It's not just HTML and JavaScript, but you can have you can just drag and drop any files you want into a sidebar and duplicate them and rename them and 
you know, include them as partials or SAS, you know, SAS partials or, or whatever. You know, it's like you have your own file system in the sky kind of thing. And that's, that was a reaction to developers want to be able to do this because that's what they can do on localhost. You know, that's what that, this is the dev environment that they're used to having. So let's rebuild that in the browser because, and take away some of, at least some of the pain. Like uh-huh. you don't need to know how to, how to configure a gulp build and or use npm or git or anything you can just come right. to code pen and use a lot of those technologies but not deal with the setup stuff or even if you do know all those technologies i just don't want to deal with it right now because i, w- mm-hmm. I want to just build something real quick and then i want to be able to share it i want other people to be able to fork it right i want feedback on it i want other people to be able to see it uh, which I can't necessarily on my local host without jumping through hoops. So that's what we built. That's a code pen project. That was a huge release for us. It took us a year to build that. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Thanks. And it's we yeah, some more too. I mean, you can um, you can deploy it too. So I guess that's mm-hmm. one of the big deals. Like if somebody wants to buy a domain name and make this their little hosted, you know, web app, and I'd say it needs to be pretty simple because there's no back end at all. Right. If you want a back end, you could use Firebase or, I don't know, some kind of hosted Mongo thing or I don't know what all. But we don't see a lot of that action mm-hmm. happening yet. I, I hope it changes soon or maybe we can make some kind of data store for it. But for the most part, it's it's for building simple, simple things. You know, right. here's my personal site, my portfolio site, my my little one off joke site or whatever. You could build that and host it and deploy it on CodePen without with needing nothing needing to buy no hosting configuring nothing that kind of thing so that's kind of cool right yeah it sounds like you can take kind of the serverless approach which is kind of gaining ground these days so yeah i i hope so if yeah. serverless really takes off that's good for me <laughs> yeah. well it's it's just another way to solve problems that is interesting and in some ways is a lot simpler depending on what you're doing so yeah, in some ways, we use it for you know we there's there's elements of of CodePen that are you know quote unquote serverless, mm-hmm. which I just think of as like Lambda basically. Yeah, right? essentially, like, right. yeah, Lambda. I think Firebase fits that paradigm right. to some degree. There's yeah, still servers, like but they're servers that I don't yeah. buy and manage and maintain. Yep. Right. So like yep. things like we offer all these languages that you can use on CodePen, like SAS and Less and CoffeeScript mm-hmm. and Babel and all that stuff. Like anything that you can think of, really. We make those each just as a little Lambda function. Like, why not? You know, yep. that seems like a perfect use case for it. Send it some code, have Lambda execute and compile that and send it back to us. Yep. Makes <laughs> sense. Perfect to me. case for it. So that's what we do it for. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, I'm kind of curious. I'm going to ask you a question that wasn't on my list. And that is uh, across all the things, you know, Code Pen, uh, Shop Talk Show, CSS Tricks. Um, all of these different things. What's the thing that you've done that you're the most proud of? Oh, man. <laughs> Pride. That's a funny thing. I, I mean, it's it has to be CodePen because it's, so re- it's so continually rewarding. Uh-huh. And it was just in the last, this last month, actually. And as a matter of fact, this morning, we had our little company internal founders, like, let's look at money for the month meeting Mm -hmm. and it was our first month since taking funding that we're firmly you know no doubt about it all money accounted for in the black nice very nice which is cool and it was it got there because of not me you know like Mm -hmm. i helped make some choices and stuff and kicked it up but the success of this was all the people that we hired and the and us working together as a team to get there. And that just feels worthy of being proud of. It's like yep. we actually made a company from nothing. I mean, on the shoulders of about 250 open source projects. So not exactly <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and technology happened to, you know, fall into the right place at the right time or whatever. But but it's still a very complicated thing that, that we piece together mm-hmm. uh, in just through through a decade of growing an audience and trying to make something that is useful to at least some people and charging money for it and stuff. We've made a business and it just it feels very like cool and like, I don't know, American in a sense. Not that yep. businesses don't exist in other countries, but you know what I mean? Yep. Entrepreneurial. That's very yep. cool. Yeah. Well, and and I love what about you? 
<laughs> what about me? What's your most proud creation? Oh man. Um, I've got so many things going on right now. I, I honestly, I think my proudest moment was just so about what a year and a half, two years ago. Yeah. Um, I was in a position where I was trying to make this major decision and the decision was essentially, um, things got to the point where I couldn't do both the podcasts and the contracting. I didn't have time. Yeah. And so, um, I kind of freaked out and then, um, you know, a lot of <laughs> thinking and praying and talking to people and yeah. I kind of decided to go full time on the podcasts. Right. And huge decision. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I didn't know anybody else who had done it. I mean, I knew people that had like massive, massive, massive shows that had gone full time, but the the podcast... and even though there's only a handful, right? I mean, you can't yeah. it's, uh, NPR stuff is like in a different league, so you can't really talk about that. And then you're like, yeah. who else do you got? Like Dan Benjamin and Leo Laporte or whatever. Yeah, yeah. well, and Dan Benjamin, I mean, his setup is it's kind of like mine and kind of not like mine. Um, Leo Laporte's kind of the same deal. You know, there are like John Lee Dumas and people like that out there that, you know, he, he's full time on, you know, Entrepreneur on Fire, but he's got this massive audience and and he sells products to him. And then, you know, the, the podcast sponsorships and everything else, you know, pay his bills too. But anyway, I was just, I didn't know how, you know, how that was going to work. And yeah. I kind of took the leap anyway. And yeah, I've been full-time podcasting for the last year and a half and it's had its ups and downs it's it's been 18 months though you know yeah. something's working i mean you know like right now you know things are a little bit tight and mm. you know there there have been some other things that have gone on that have been less than fun but for the most part it's it's just really highly rewarding and then when i go to events and have people come up and basically say hey look you know i i love your show and i feel like it's helped accelerate my career. We've had a couple people come up to myself or one of my co-hosts and basically say, or I was teaching myself how to program and I decided that I may as well at least see what it's like to go out and look for a job. And it turned out that all of the interview questions they asked me were things that I learned from your show. And so awesome. I, I doubled my income by becoming a programmer right. sooner than I thought I could. Yeah, because they, you know, even if this show isn't teaching you a direct skill like uh -huh. let versus const or something it's it's teaching it's showing you human beings that are out there yep. who have done it and how to talk about this stuff and how to feel comfortable talking about this i mean there's a million yep. things that's great i'm sure that's you know that's you for the one person that's found you and told you that there's countless others that where that's their story yep it's very cool but then the other thing is is just you know i'm kind of a person that thrives a bit on just feeling like I know people and mm -hmm. that, you know, that I have a relationship with them. And I get a lot of that from my co-hosts and that's always also very rewarding for me. So. Fantastic. Doing what you're most proud of. That's a yeah. good answer. <laughs> so yeah, I, I love it. I guess I it'd be a little sad it. if we were both like, Oh, the 2002, those are the good years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't wanna... But yeah, the other thing is, is podcasting is growing, programming is growing. And so there are that many more people to help every year. And it's just, it's really cool. Yeah. So I'm going to push us into the last segment, which is picks. Have you ever felt like you're falling behind or that the programming world is moving so fast that it's impossible to keep up? Then there's the issue of where to go to make sure you're up to date. The answer is to join a community dedicated to discussing the latest in JavaScript. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if you got JavaScript Jabber all day? Well, you can, kind of. We've created a Slack community for JavaScript Jabber. That means that you can connect with our listeners and guests on a platform you're most likely already using. Plus, we've set up a Keeping Current channel that pulls stories from across the web to help you know what people are talking about. And coming soon, we'll be holding monthly webinars and roundtable video chats to connect with experts in the community and with each other. So come join us at javascriptjabber.com slash slack. Do you have some things you want to shout out about on the show? Well, I mean, it's, it's I feel like you've given me an amazing opportunity to be self-promotional during this, yeah. which I always take the advantage of because as we're both entrepreneurial in some case, that's just part of the job, really. Yep. So I got to explain all about code pen projects already, which is usually the thing I like to tell people about because not, a, you know, as much marketing as you can do for something 
it's never enough. You mm -hmm. know, most people have never heard of it. So anyway, if you want to build a really simple website and use things like Nunjux for templating and SAS for styling and things like, you know, write, write in ES6 and React or whatever. CodePen Projects has got, it's all ready for that. There's Webpack in there in case you really are, you know, want to write in the modern style of React with little modules and piecing them all together and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the place to do it. It's much better for that type of thing. And I bet there's tons of people that listen to JavaScript Jabber and my jazz story here that, uh, that's not just how they write every single day. They yep. expect Node Node to be available and NPM and being able to uh, write in Webpack and import yep. their modules and all that stuff, so that you can do that in uh, uh, in CodePen projects. So cool, that's a thing that exists. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and my podcast that we alluded to many times on that during the show too is ShopTalkShow.com, and that's just Dave and I talking about. It's, a, it's similar stuff. It's maybe less JavaScript focused than. Uh, I don't know your show that's particular and JS Jabber anyway, but, yep. uh, but JavaScript comes up plenty because how can it not, you know? Yep, absolutely. I, I'm going to ask too, are there any books or movies that you've read or listened to or watched or whatever lately that you read? Oh, so many. Gotta just, I tend to, I, you know, I just, I like to go into the movies a lot. So I pretty much see every, everything that comes to theater that I want to see. We just saw <laughs> alien covenant. A couple uh -huh. days ago, it's pretty sweet. In fact, it got me, you know, of course, I don't know, just as any self-respecting nerd, as soon as you see a movie, you're like that, like, let's watch all the other ones too. And then let's watch. <laughs> right. Then let's like, then let's Google videos on like, what are, because after you're done, you're like, oh, okay, so there's like the face huggers. Yeah. And they, they attach to the face and then, uh -huh. then they burst out of the chest or whatever are those did it change is that just like the life cycle of the thing and what do we call these things xenomorphs they'll call as, as anybody should know and it <laughs> kind of depends on what they attach to you know because then there's like alien versus predator and those face huggers can kill predators too and then like what pops out of the chest then is kind of like an alien <laughs> predator hybrid anyway i was just i ended up watching like 50 youtube videos about it all because i'm like this world that they built for alien it's really <laughs> nice it's, it's pretty wonderful so i'll shout out to that i highly enjoyed alien covenant they nice. built a nice little world around that stuff very cool well <laughs> what's gonna, your shout out do you get do you get I, to do I, something i do one every time and it's funny Please because do. you're you're my second of three interviews today so i have to kind of vary it from <laughs> show yeah show. you got lots of show notes i should have prepared better i want yours though i can't wait yeah so uh the first one is I've been working on this for a while and I sh it should be out by the time this is released because this episode will come out sometime in July. We're already booked out that far. But cool. um, anyway, I've been working on a course for people who are looking for a better coding job. And so if you're in a job, you feel stuck, you feel like you're not growing or you're tired of your boss. I mean, people have all kinds of reasons why they're not happy at the job they're at. You know, they want to work with people who are a little bit more committed to learning to code, whatever it is. You know, I want to go to more conferences. This course helps you figure out what it is you want, where the companies are that will give it to you, and then how to get hired there. And so that's that's what this course is all about. You can get it at getacoderjob.com. And yeah, it's, it's an eight-week course, lots of videos. Uh, you get into a Slack chat. I do office hours. It's awesome. So go check it out. I'm also working on um, kind of an add-on and probably stripped down version a little bit for people who are looking for their first job, but I haven't quite completed that yet. It might be done by the time this comes out, but I don't know for sure. That is awesome. Get some, get you some jobs, people. That's right. And then um, the other thing that I'm going to pick, and this is something that I'm just getting into now, is React Native, mm -hmm. um, which is the mobile framework. And uh, yeah, I've just decided, you know what, I want to build some mobile apps. So yeah, setting that up, it's it's pretty cool. So I'm I'm really digging that. And then I've also been playing with a system called GoCD, which is built by the folks over at ThoughtWorks. And uh, what GoCD is, is it's basically a CI slash CD. So continuous integration, continuous de delivery build system for your apps. So you can set up a step for, um, you know, run Webpack. Or if you want to see each stage, you know, you can have it compile your TypeScript and then compile your SAS and then compile your whatever. And each stage you can see, okay, this is where it's failing or falling apart or, you know, here, here's where the, these stage of tests are not working. And so you can, you can do it all in stages and then put the whole thing out and it's pretty darn cool. 
So, wow. and it's open source is the the beauty it of it. It's open not, source. It's not a, yep. Right. You could you can deploy it to your own server, and they do offer support packages. I haven't looked at what those look like, but you know, if it becomes mission critical to you, then you can definitely get help from ThoughtWorks on that stuff. Yeah, there's definitely like paid products for this, but it, it's kind of cool to be able to just spin up your own for free if you want. Yep, and I'm pretty sure you just pull it down by package. I set it up mm-hmm. on a VM, and I don't remember exactly how it went, but <laughs> it was pretty easy, so. Yeah. Sweet. Yep. I didn't know this existed. That's why this, this why it's, that's why this podcast segment is useful. Yep, absolutely. And then I <laughs> guess if we're being self-promotional, I'll mention one more thing. By the time this comes out, I will also have a JS Dev Summit up, and I haven't bought the domain yet, so... <laughs> I will have a domain up. I think it's just going to be jsdevsummit.com if it if that one's available. Looks like it is. And uh, yeah, just go check that out. I'm putting one on for Ruby in October. I might do one in December for another technology. And then yeah, JS Dev Summit will probably be in February. And yeah, it'll be seven days or six days. And uh, yeah, I'll invite a whole bunch of awesome JavaScript people to come talk to us. And uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be really cool, and it's free. And then if you want access to the Slack channel on the back end and uh, the video recordings and a couple of other extras I'm going to throw in, then you can get the all access pass for 97 bucks if you sign up before the conference. So anyway, there you but, go. but yeah, come for free. Come watch it for free. That's why I'm That's doing it. That's a great it. way to, to run a people. conference. So love it. All right. Well, if people want to see what you're working on these days, Chris, do you have a blog or a Twitter account or something they should go look at? Yeah. I'm, my full name is Chris Coyer, C-O-Y-I-E-R is my last name. And I'm that on, um, you know, pretty much everything. GitHub, Twitter, .net is my personal site, which I'm rebuilding soon here just to just to be a little more it's a blog focused and i'm like eh, i blog elsewhere for the most part you know let me i'm gonna downplay the blog on my personal site and make it more of a a hub for situations just like this where i can send people and be like you want to know about me my url does a good job of explaining about me so that's kind of the impetus for the redesign and maybe if you're not re- hearing this till july it's probably already done so chris net. let's say that's the perfect place to go sounds great well thanks for coming chris this was yeah a lot of thanks fun. for having me on it's fantastic good luck on your your other interviews today and the success of the show and the whole podcast network in general i uh, wish you the best man all right thanks you too yeah take care all right bye bandwidth for this segment is provided by cashfly the world's fastest cdn Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to learn more.